Hello, 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 folks. It's me again, Kerb uh, Kerbinot. <laughs> I almost forgot my name there. Wait to look at that. Um, today we're going to be doing something very specific. We're going to be launching this thing, this big ship, into geostationary orbit. Now, a geostationary orbit is an orbit which goes around Earth, or in this case, Kerbin, at a specific height and the height of the orbit means that for every time you fully go around the planet uh, the, the planet has turned a whole one time which basically means you stay in the same spot in relation to the planet so in, rea in reality this is really useful for, s for satellites like TV stuff and ra well, I don't know about radio, I think radio does it via masts and all that but I think, uh, you know they use it for TV and stuff, and seeing as our trusty wee Kerbals need the the TV of today, up-to-date, uh, very fast, super bloomin' fast TV, we're going to be launching this satellite. But the tricky part is getting it into geostationary orbit. Now this is what I'm going to be talking about today, I'm going to be telling you how to do it. Now I'll just have you let you have a little look at my probe that we're going to be launching. I've called it the tourist because it's going to be touring the skies. Um, you can see here I've got solar panels and then as a backup I've got these generators. I've got some, you know, little add-ons here. Um, I've got a Xenon engine just to power it. It's quite small so the Xenon engine should do. And I think that's it really. That's all I've got on the probe. And I've got the pilot thing there, but I've also got a mechjeb thing here. I'm going to be using mechjeb for this. Now, you don't need to use mechjeb, and I will show you how to do it without mechjeb, but using mechjeb definitely helps. I will leave a link to the mechjeb um, thing plugin in the description. You can take a look at that either now or preferably when the video is finished so that you know what I'm on about first. And, yeah, rocket's done, rocket's ready, let's get this onto the launch pad. I've sorted out the, uh, the staging here. Uh, you really have to be careful with your staging, like this rocket's always insane with the staging. And let's go, let's just save and launch. Bada bing, bada boom. Right, here we go. So, we're on the launch pad. Now what I could do, is I could just type in my ascent here, and go up to geostationary orbit, and that's it. And it's just bam, I'm there. No need to worry. And very much, it's the same kind of thing when you're doing it without MacJeb. It's just you have to do it yourself. So uh, <laughs> let me just make this clear: for the height in the Kerbal Space Program for geostationary orbit, and the height for geostationary orbit in real life is completely different. In Kerbal Space Program it is 2868 kilometers. So I'd be putting in 2868 up there. And that's um, exactly 2868751 meters. So that's, let me think, 2 million 868,751 meters in Kerbal Space Program. It's a lot higher, a lot higher in real life. And I made the mistake of trying to launch my thing into the real life orbit and ended up going into orbit around the sun. And it didn't work very well. So just bear that in mind. If you're searching up, make sure it's the height for Kerbal Space Program and not for reality. But enough of me going on about how I'm really rubbish at sums and figuring out heights and everything. Let's just plug this in here and then we can time lapse up and I'll show you what it looks like. And then I will show you uh, how to get up there manually because I understand that a lot of you either may not have, will not be able to get, or just simply don't want to use MechJeb. And I can, that's completely understandable. It works for me, it might not work for other people. So let's just plug this in here. Do, 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 2868 and we just engage and launch hopefully no there we go and 
time to start the time lapse. And there we go folks, Mechchip has taken us up into geostationary orbit and if we now go back to this view here with the lovely music of KSP of course we can then uh, see this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to detach this um, let's just stop our rotation and all that I'm going to let's see, decouple, that's what I want Right, so we're going to decouple this. And that's just going to fire that off. And we can point that towards the Earth. And all that good stuff. So we can say extend panels. I really should put an uh, action group in for these, but... You know, I'm, I'm not too good on action groups, so... You know, we'll have to wait. So I'm just toggling all this stuff on. I apologize if this music is too loud for your sensitive ears. Right, that's all that stuff on. And what are we looking for now? I'm looking for anything that I had here. Yes, so too far from object. Wow. Not here. We've got our thermometer there. And that'll just do that for us. Now we're going to toggle back to here. Look up our, our resources and we can see we're going to be uh, running out of fuel soon. So let's just go in. Now the engine itself produces fuel. So what we're going to want to do is just fire up the engine and do a deorbit burn and then get this thing to crash land. No, I had too much fuel in this. I kind of feel bad because I, I really didn't want to have that much fuel. You can see our thing is going up here. So what we can do is we can just go here, here, and in, in, and that will push that up. Just do this. Right, and that's all that fuel now going to this engine. And we can look down here. Our periaps is decreasing slowly. We want to get this below 70. And when that gets below 70, or, well, yeah, if that gets below maybe 60, we know we're really getting there, but if it gets below 70, then we know we're going to get into an aero break situation at least. Right, there we go, so we're going to land. That's good.
So you can see our electric charge is gone, so we're just going to fall through the atmosphere at high speeds. And, uh, yeah. So that's interesting. Then we're going to crash into the ground. See it? And that's a geostationary orbit. Now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to do it with normal stuff. So we go back to Space Center, we go to the launch pad, and we're just going to launch this again. Now I am going to use MetJeb just to power it for the getting rid of this bottom stage when we get it up there, but apart from that, we shall not use MetJeb, so we can just take that away. In fact, let's take everything away. We don't need it. We don't need MetJeb. We are going to do this all on our own. Now, you might have noticed on the other launch we had a whole bunch of wobble going on up here and the engine went wild and I'm not planning on doing the same thing again. Right. Here we go. This is going to be interesting. Well, folks, that'll do. I'm not gonna. Uh, yeah, and it's an it's an exact art to get it right on on the geostationary mark, like up at that height of uh, two eight six eight. But I think you know I'm happy with this uh, two eight six three and the two eliminate seven. Se I don't know. It's a bit off, but you know that's what you get for not using robotics. Well not for using MechJab anyway. You know, it's it's a reasonable geostationary orbit. I'm not going to complain. It's it's a good orbit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to detach this like we did last time and launch it. So, oh, oh, wrong one. There you go. And we're going to switch over. Like so. And we're just going to put all of this fuel. That's an alt click I'm doing. And that just lets you transfer fuel. There we go, and we're just going to move into a deorbit burn. And bada bing, bada boom, we're going to land. Hooray! Worked. Just, uh. There we go.
that's us. And that is how you get geostationary orbit. It's pretty simple. It's like a normal orbit, except it's a very fine art of getting it uh, to a specific height. And it's that height that really matters. It's nothing to do with your speed or the angle or anything. Well, it helps if you're at 90 degrees there. Obviously, if you're going around up and down, well, at zero degrees, I think that's 90 degrees. If you're going up and down like this, then you're going to end up kind of doing some weird polar orbit where you're always in the same spot at two points in your orbit. So that would mean that here you will be facing this spot and then when you orbit around to this side over the top of the Earth, uh, carbon, top of carbon, you will be then facing the same spot. But between those times you'll be facing different spots, if that makes any sense. You'll be seeing the bottom and the top of carbon. Anyway, that's, that is um, geostationary satellites and the geostationary orbit in its very basic form. I'm going to go now because I don't want to crash my game. <laughs> so bye bye.